Welcome to Picture Healer channel. Today I'm going to answer some questions about combining your yearly flying star chart and the monthly chart. Since we are starting Feng Shui period 9, many people have questions about how to interpret their own flying star Feng Shui chart. So this can all get confusing and complicated, but let's start from the basic. If you are new to Feng Shui and you don't want to spend too much time, the easiest way is to look at the yearly Flying Star Feng Shui chart. 2024 is the year of dragon, and generally we go by the lunar year. So that's around February 2024 to February 2025. So if you want to keep it simple, just follow the yearly chart rearrange your feng shui every year around February 4th, the Li Chun day, or around Chinese New Year. And that's perfectly fine. But if you want to take advantage of the monthly flying star, you can adjust your feng shui every month. The basic rule is to keep your yearly feng shui cures and just add or move around monthly feng shui cures based on the monthly flying star feng shui chart. Because the yearly star and the period nine stars are not changing, so you still need the yearly feng shui cures. They stay the same. The only feng shui cure you have to be careful is uh, moving water, such as a fountain. Because sometimes the monthly star is negative, such as a number five, five yellow misfortune star. Or if you are sensitive to quarrels and legal issues, if there's star three or star seven, we don't want to stir up the energy. If that's the case, you can just unplug your fountain during that month. But on the other hand, if we add a fountain in certain location, that usually means that area has lucky stars. So even if there's a negative star there in the monthly chart, it can usually balance out and it's not as bad. Besides a fountain or other moving water, the other tricky one is a fish tank. Fish tank is kind of tricky. We can consider it as moving water or still water. Most fish tank have water filter, but it's usually not very strong to see the current or the waterfall like a fountain. And the still water have function of reducing negative energy. So I don't think the fish tank will be a big issue. You can still keep the filter going and you should not have negative effect. As long as the fish and any plants are healthy and clean in the fish tank, it should be okay if you leave it as is. And many people are asking about if they can place their feng shui cures everywhere in every room. For example, if the black crystal or the clear quartz crystal can be placed in every room. And it kind of depends on the purpose of your feng shui cures. For the salt water cure and the black crystals, they are used to absorb negative energy so it's good to place in areas with negative stars you try to reduce. But if you put them in a very lucky direction with lucky stars, they can also absorb the positive energy. So it's not an ideal solution. They will not really cause any problems. It's just that the positive energy is also reduced. But the clear quartz crystal or other color of crystals will be fine to place in every room, even in the bedroom or restroom, you'll be fine. And uh, another group of feng shui items are all the feng shui animals, such as pisho, qilin, fu dog, or lions. For those, I will avoid placing them in the bedroom or private spaces. It's better to place them in the public spaces, such as the entrance area, living room, even dining room is fine, or office. A lot of these animals are for protection from Sha Qi or any negative spirit. 
So it can be kind of strong to place it near your bed. The only exception is the turtle. Turtle is harmless and it's a symbol of good health, longevity, and uh, support. So you can place a statue of turtle in your bedroom without problems. And most other feng shui cures are safe to place everywhere. It really depends on your purpose. And one thing about the feng shui cure is your intention and how you maintain it. Because we are using them as tool to try to manipulate the energy. So when we set it up, we need to be clear about our intentions. Some people will say it out loud or create some ceremony or even have some offering or pick a special day or time to establish that connection and give them the function you want them to be. The second important thing is to maintain them regularly. As time goes by, the item can become dusty and uh, slowly losing their power. So we can recharge them in many different ways. Some people use incense. You can light some incense at home or bring them to the temple to go over the incense there. Or you can place them under the sunlight for a couple hours to absorb the positive energy. Or if it's a crystal, you can place it next to a bigger crystal that has stronger energy. So there are many different ways of recharge. You can be more creative and come up with your method. The traditional way is always find a Taoist professional from a temple, but now it's very difficult if you don't have access. And I think it's fine if you do it by yourself. As long as you have the right intention, it should still work for you. Another common question is how to interpret a house chart in Piri 9. And the simple answer is that the best star in Piri 9 is number 9. And the second best star is the number 1. So if you see star number nine and star number one, that's the lucky area. And the number two is the next upcoming star. So it's also turning positive. And the rest of stars are not tiny star. The number eight star is not tiny anymore. But since we are just starting period nine, the number eight is still a positive star. It's just not as good as in period eight anymore. And number six is one of the three white stars. So it's basically still positive, even though it's not tiny. The three white stars are number one, six, and eight. Number one is very lucky. Six and eight are okay. It's kind of neutral toward the positive, but it's not a big problem. And for other stars, the negative side can show more than the positive, such as stars 3, 4, 5, and 7. Both 3 and 7 are related to conflict, quarrel, fighting, so there will be a lot of chance of fighting and uh, conflict in the period 9. And when we talk about the house chart, this is another tricky question. Because even in flying star feng shui, there are many different house charts. There's a simple version of looking at a house chart that's based on the eight directions. And there's a more complicated and the detailed way of looking at the flying star house chart that's based on the 24 directions or the 24 mountains and also the feng shui period. The first type of the flying star house chart is very simple and straightforward. You know your house facing direction and you can find the charts easily. And the second type is more tricky because that's based on your construction year or the last major renovation year to decide the chart. So even though we are starting the period nine, Unless your house is just finished building in 2024 or you are doing major renovation in 2024, 
Other than that, your house chart stays the same. It doesn't update to a PERI 9 house chart. So we don't really see a lot of PERI 9 house chart yet. Even though you have the same house chart, the interpretation will be different. And as I said before, the best star will be 9 and 1. So that's very different from PERI 8. In PERI 8, we have the number 8 as the best star, and we arrange our feng shui accordingly. But during PERI 9, we look at number 9 as the best star, so the lucky direction will change. So now you see we have so many different charts you can combine together that makes things even more complicated. Or you can say it will be more detailed if you can interpret several charts together. So besides the yearly chart, monthly chart, you have the house chart, either the house chart by the eight facing direction or the house chart by the 24 mountain direction and the construction period. Do you just want to refresh your house and improve your energy every year? Then just follow the yearly feng shui. And if you have specific concerns such as health or relationships or conflict legal issues, then you can pay attention to certain stars and focus on areas of your concern. And another way is to look at the major areas in your house. And that includes the main entrance and your bedroom, and the room you stay for the longest time. It can be a living room or a kitchen or an office. So every month you can focus on those rooms and just make adjustment there. You don't have to change feng shui of every directions every month if you don't have the time. I hope this video clarifies some of the questions about the flying star feng shui chart. There's really no one certain way to do things. You can adapt the principles and uh, make it work for you. Thank you so much for watching today and talk to you next week.